Good evening everyone. It is currently 11.34 p.m. on Christmas Day here in Tokyo and I'd like to wish you all a Merry Christmas. And to confirm this, uh, this message, I thought I'd play a little Christmas Nights. Disclaimer, this is not a live commentary because frankly, apart from Geometry Wars and maybe your Alan Wakes, I'm just not good enough at any game to do live com. Now, more on this in a moment. から見ると女の人、お年寄り、みんな本当に足早に歩いて行きます。二人はそんな街の中で物足りなさを感じていました。街はこんなに綺麗で輝いているのに、一年中で。一番楽しい季節なのに。二人が瞳の間を持って歩いていると知らないうちにシーズタワーへと近づいていました。タワーはこのツインシーズンの街の真ん中に立っています。クリスマスのお化粧がしてあってまるで。大きな大きなクリスマスツリーのようです。でもこのツリーには大切なものが欠けていました。それはてっぺんにひときわ輝いているはずの星だったのです。Christmas nights. So, um, not a live com. I also want to emphasize this is not going to be good gameplay because I think I used to be pretty good at nights when I was a little kid, but not anymore. And also, I do not have the special analog nights pad that was released specially for this game, which means I'm using the old satin pad, which means it's hard to do the loops, which means my little hands hurt and I'm in trouble, but I'll still do my best. Anyhow, Christmas nights. Uh, I'm guessing most people who are watching this video probably are on this channel because of the Sega content, so I doubt I need to introduce Knights to anyone. But just in case, Knights was of course the 1996 game for the Saturn, which when I was a 12 year old boy willing the Saturn to get stuck into the battle with Sony and Nintendo during this generation of games, this seemed like the game that might have done it. And I was um, an avid reader of Sega Saturn magazine in the UK back then, which was super hyping this game up. And I remember being so, so excited. And from the trailer, which, spoiler, you'll see a little bit of towards the end of this video, it seemed like it would be some kind of a, a truly 3D um, flying game. And it looked so colourful and amazing. And. Um, it seemed to offer all freedom of dreams and flight and all this stuff, which, uh, with Mario 64 on, on the horizon, seemed like exactly the thing to, to really stake the claim of the Saturn in, in the marketplace. Of course, it didn't end up really being that. It ended up being much more. I remember putting in the game and the Saturn and being so excited and then playing it, and I wanted to love it, and I did to an extent, but it just it was a lot more. Linear is a very different game to what I expected. No less unique for that. I think it certainly is an unusual damn game, but not the game that I think the Saturn needed or really could possibly provide. And you know, if it had been this truly 3D thing of all kinds of freedom, it wouldn't have been the game that it, it was. But anyway, what this game is, to anyone who for some reason doesn't know, 
is as you can, you go kind of around in these circuits, um, and you have to collect these orbs, which put you into bonus mode, whereupon everything you do is worth more points, and you score points by chaining together all the different things you can interact with, collecting stuff, going through loops, destroying enemies. And the fun of the game is learning the routes and practicing like crazy, so you can put together these great loops. Now one problem I've got doing this video is that I can't remember any of the courses, so I, I, I have to react to what's coming when in fact you need to have memorized it and be ready to chain things together. So that was the game, and it, yeah, when I was, again when I was a kid I was playing it and I completed it very quickly because it's not it's not a challenging game to complete, it's a challenging game to be doing these masterful loops at. And if you want to see a great uh, Knights video or series of videos, then there used to be a channel called Knights Charlie, which just was superb. If that still exists, then go check it out, because it was great. And it'll show you how this game really should be played. Me, without the proper pad, I'm struggling to even go in a straight line half the time. I mean, look at that, I missed all of those things I was going for. So this is not a great demonstration. Knights play. Anywho, so Knights happened. It was great in what it was. It wasn't what I hoped it would be, but it was still a wonderful game. And uh, one of my strongest memories of that time was going off to Dixon's, the electronics store, and picking up my copy of Knights with my dad, picking me up after school, and being given a special Knights baseball cap, which I have no doubt is probably in my parents' attic somewhere. And a uh, great game. And by the way, in terms of how these, these circuits are supposed to go, you're supposed to collect the 20 blue orbs as fast as you can, and then get to the uh, chopper, which in this case is the big balloon thing you'll see me enter fairly soon, I would hope, which then puts you into bonus time. Then you're supposed to use all the available time you've got to pull tricks. Controls are very simple. You just press one button, C, I you press, it could be any of the buttons, I guess to um, dash, which helps with doing loops. You do loops and that creates a black hole effect which will suck in anything in the vicinity. And the shoulder buttons, left controls, knights is left foot, right controls the right, and that allows you to do tricks while flying. That's the thing I was saying about. And that's the game. And the um, reason it's a yellow thing is like a special bonus round where you're rewarded for doing tricks. I don't really know what I'm doing here. Um, so Knights came out, I, I guess it was pretty pretty popular, certainly an iconic character by Sonic Team. Um, didn't spawn any sequels on the Saturn except for this special uh, Christmas Knights, which I first played, may not have been the full game, may have been just a bonus or like a, you know, a demo from Sega Saturn magazine, which was just free with the magazine. And um, it's... It offers you a chance to play as the two characters from the game, Clarice and Elliot, who both turn into knights and act in the same way. One of the courses, Clarice's, which one I'm playing right now, is identical to the released game, I believe. Elliot seems is, is, is different, for sure. Um, and it's obviously your Christmas themes. You also get a lot of bonus material, and you'll see that a bit later in this video. And unfortunately, I didn't have time to unlock him in this playthrough. And unfortunately, my Saturn's battery is shot, so I have to keep starting again whenever I'm playing this game. You can unlock Sonic, and he controls basically the same way as the kids do in the, in the game. Like you, you traverse fully, full freedom around this 3D environment. Like that part was true. That is fully 3D, but it's a very, very small part of the game, unlike how it kind of seemed in the, the trailers. Um, and that was Sonic's first full 3D appearance on the Saturn, even before Sonic Jam, which had a, uh, a brief, or well, a significant 3D component where you could also unlock various extras and secret bits. So, Christmas Nights. If you were eagle-eyed at the beginning of this video, you'll see there was a uh, time and date thing at the top uh, left corner. The backgrounds change depending on, and the themes of the levels change depending on when you're playing it. I think throughout like December it's this Christmas theme and it's, oh, I won't lie to you, I was reading this Wikipedia earlier, you get a wintry theme, 
around like November and January, and then um, like April Fools maybe you play as Riella, the like anti knights, and Halloween maybe has a special theme too. I am legitimately playing this on Christmas Day. You, you can change the date to whatever you want. I'm playing it Christmas Day. Apparently, for Christmas, Santa Claus, if you will, is supposed to appear. I was so focused on the game, but I didn't notice. Maybe I was playing too bad to unlock that, but there's all kinds of secret stuff going on here. Is what I'm saying. And also, depending on whether you're playing day or night, I believe that also changes the look of the level. So that's all pretty sweet. And I don't mean to sound too down about Knights, it was a great, great game. I loved it. And the, it's such imagination, it's, it's such an uh, emblematic game of the uh, Saturn era. Sega having all these wonderful ideas and putting stuff out on it, not just not quite working or quite, quite selling the way it needed to. But still a uh, wonderful game. So, I've just... By the way, any Knights fans watching, I know that boss fight was painful. Truth is, even when I was a kid and I was quote unquote good at this game, I didn't know how to beat that boss properly. See here, look at this demo. It looks like it's 3D, right? This isn't a demo, this is a replay of what I just played. But this is kind of the way the demos made the game look like it would be, like it had a lot more dynamic kind of freedom. Anyway, I know what you're supposed to do with that boss is do a giant loop that kills it in one go, but I could never do that, even when I was playing the game a lot. So we're just going for the laborious route here. After each level you get to play this game which unlocks presents. The first ones are kind of jive, they're just um, images from the game. I don't know why I did that, I knew it was in the other box. Um, but later on ones unlock Sonic and Rear Let's Play as a permanent character. Uh, maybe if, if anyone is interested, I might put in the hours. That's kind of creepy. And do that later on. Or another time. And uh, yeah, so I was watching the um, trailer earlier, and it did remind me how fantastic the design of this game is. So many crazy ideas, there's a time and date. So many crazy ideas stuffed into the game. Each level having really distinctive themes. Really imaginative bosses as well. Not all of them necessarily working, but certainly the imagination was there. And also, if I'm being honest, kind of a quite a touching storyline about courage, overcoming fear. Here's the gallery. Uh, powerful, you know, universal themes. I would hazard to suggest. So, I'll play. I've played through Clarissa's level. I will now play through. Elliot's. Um, I was trying my best to do decent links, but again, I'm really just hamstrung by the fact that I don't remember the layout of the routes, so it's very difficult to, to play it well. So, as I said, I hope you've all had a good Christmas. I took it pretty damn easy today, which was nice in and of itself. Uh, Christmas here is pretty, well, it's a frenzy in terms of shopping. It's getting bigger and bigger each year, I think. Uh, you know, loads of Christmas trees everywhere. And it's all been out pretty much since Halloween finished. And, um, those two events here are much more connected than they were ever for me in England. Like, both of them, the shops are just full of it during that time. And then as soon as it's done, like, BAM, it's over. What I do miss about home, I guess, is the lack of decent Christmas TV. Not that I'm in much of a position to judge, because my Japanese are still too poor to really be able to judge the quality of TV, but sometimes it's just be nice to be able to turn on TV and have Die Hard or Gremlins or whatever already on, just waiting for me. I watched uh, E.T. today for the first time, and it was a funny old film to watch. Oh, I don't know how it, I've gone this far in my life without watching E.T. And I was already familiar with the story and like, the iconic moments. And it's a, it's a lot less kind of smooth than I would expect from Spielbergo. Like, uh, I don't really know what I mean by that, but... Um, it just seems to move very quickly in, in terms of establishing Elliot and E.T.'s friendship. 
Not that I'm criticizing ET, I mean, I really enjoyed it. And it certainly did fill in some holes in my cultural knowledge, especially after watching Stranger Things and very much enjoying it earlier this year. Uh, now I know there are, I don't want to spoil Stranger Things for anyone here, but there are certainly some familiarities here. And certainly, I loved that series. And in fact, I've had a chance to watch a lot of good TV recently, especially since I've pretty much given up gaming to the extent that I was gaming a lot back in the old Geometry Wars glory days. Uh, one show that I seriously enjoyed, much more than I expected to, was The Shield, which was a cop show, American police drama. It came out in like the early to mid 2000s, I believe. And uh, I'd heard it was good. Whenever I was looking for new stuff to watch, it's a name that would appear. But it always seemed to be like a step down from a really prestige television like Sopranos, Breaking Bad, uh, what have you. But I would certainly rate it well up there with anything else that I've ever watched. That seven seasons of just fantastic drama, characters, acting. And as far as it being police drama, I know that sounds like the most hackneyed genre of all, but damn, it's just doing it so well, and such a kinetic style. Oh, wonderful show. I just wish I could watch it again for the first time. Some great guest appearances. I enjoyed The Shield very much. Uh, Better Call Saw, since a long time ago now, that was also terrific. Of course, I also watch shows like uh, Game of Thrones, which got nothing original said of whatsoever. Walking Dead, did so. God, I wish I could be freed from that show, but I just can't help but keep watching it. Um, so I say it's been a good year in TV, but Stranger Things really did stand out. I know everyone's calling it very derivative, and I'm old enough to be able to remember a lot of the things that it was referencing, but I really didn't find, well, I guess there are two things there. There's one is the questions that being derivative in style, which may well be true. In terms of it relying too much on nostalgia and callbacks, I really don't get that criticism whatsoever. I mean, it's a period piece. How is it not going to be having stuff redolent of that period? I didn't find it to be at all distracting or like dependent on that to um, get a reaction from me as a viewer. I just thought that was part of creating the world it was creating, and that was a world that I was really, very quickly, got invested in. So, to that. As far as it being um, derivative, I, I guess, and especially us watching E.T., I can kind of maybe see that more. Uh, but I still felt like, it still felt very distinctive to me. Maybe just the opening credits alone just killed me. Like the first one, I, I don't remember being so hyped to watch a TV show just from the credits. Fantastic. Anyway, I hope you guys don't mind me rambling away here. This is uh, more of an update video, seeing as my last video, which was my first video for like a year or so, was just focusing on Shenmue, which is a game I've probably got more to say about than this festive offering. In terms of, I just noticed having a bit of trouble with the enemies over there. Like, in some ways, this game probably suffered when I was judging it as a as a wiener from me comparing it to things that really don't make sense to compare it to like it, as I said before it's very easy to complete if your only aim is to just finish all the levels and the, you know, the baddies really pose no threats whatsoever you can easily I mean, if they hit you you lose five seconds so what in terms of like difficulty of getting to the end there is no challenge there and um, you, you can, if you run out of time, you turn in, and I'll, I'll demonstrate this actually in a bit, because, well, you'll see. If you run out of time, here, by the way, what I'm doing here, I thought the most efficient way of getting through this level with good points was to go, I'd gone past this point, and I collected the small number of orbs I needed to turn into bonus knights. So I went back on myself to go there, but it was actually took longer to get there than I expected, and then I realised, hell, I've only got like, very uh, little, small amount of time left before the end of this level, so I decided to just um, muck around a bit. 
and then show you guys what happens when you run out of time. So you'll see that in a moment. And that's the one time when you really are under a sense of peril, because when you turn into a kid, then there's an alarm clock chasing you, because this story is all happening in the dreams of the children, Clarice and Elliot. And if the alarm clock catches up with you, then you wake up and that's level over, dream over. And that's kind of cool, like the longer you're out there in your human form, child form, <coughs> here we go, the more difficult it is to evade the, the clock. But still, if you get to this point, then you may as well give up anyway, because you're going to get no points. And here you see a great example of early 3D platforming and by Sega, and the, sh the terrible, terrible camera. Like, to move the camera, you press L or R, and it turns 90 degrees. <laughs> it doesn't make for a great deal of finesse. But see here, again, this appeared in the trailer, and it seemed like, oh, okay, like, this is part of the game, this completely open 3D world. But no, this is what happens if you screw up. It's really not part of the game in any meaningful sense. Anywho, so I was saying, those baddies don't pose any threat at all in terms of completing the game, but again, the point is that it's not that kind of a game. The point of this game is to be perfect at it, to become perfect. And those enemies are just another kind of barrier, and if you lose five seconds and you're going for the best possible score, then they are a massive threat. And you need to be incorporating them, attacking them. As well as a threat, they're also a chance to extend your links by smoothly attacking them. Like there are three ways of killing enemies in this game. You can absorb them into your black hole, you can grab onto them and then like press C and you know, charge through them, or you can anticipate them going into your path, or you can you know, aim towards them and dash straight through them, which is the best way of killing them because it's a lot faster. Well, not necessarily best, depends if you need to be doing a loop for any reason, but it's a way of quickly incorporating them into your link. So that's the point of these enemies, but if you just play it through once, then you're going to miss that. Because you'll think, well, that's game done, there was no challenge, what a waste of time. Anyway, we've got the uh, star back. ナイツと一緒に七色に輝くなんといっても、エリオットとクラリスの心にウキウキした気分が戻ってきたことがそれを物語っていました。そして街にもろうそくの炎のような幸せがあちこちにともっていたのです。二人の心はほんのり温かくなりました。